All right, guys, welcome to day number five of uh, MP Stout Week 2019. And uh, not gonna lie, I've not been scared of a beer for uh, a hell of a long time. But um, yeah, this, this could be really quite interesting. As of course, I'm getting messaged as I'm recording the video. I hate my life just jesting um yeah so we've got another collaboration and uh as i fall backwards into my cabinet um yeah there was a in the closet joke somewhere there not really the best time to be talking about r kelly let's be honest and uh, yeah i am looking like a hipster version of the life aquatic at the moment but it's because i just felt like looking like this sad really but anyway so yeah a very special beer today uh with only three more days to go and uh one that i'm recording this at five to nine in the evening which will probably mean i will have trouble sleeping after this because my body just reacts in weird and wonderful ways it would seem um and also it doesn't help that i've got to be up early tomorrow because i've got a day in down in manchester because there's um a couple of tool takeovers and uh, there's uh, a couple of nice releases from Northern Monk so uh, yeah I mean I could wait until the day after but I don't know we'll see so uh, yeah we're going over to um, Het Uptier I know I said that wrong and also Brofri de Molen and this is a collaboration that they've done, which comes in a real nice box. I don't know why it's open. Uh, I think it was brewed at Hetutje in the Netherlands. Mind you, uh, the prof are from the Netherlands as well, aren't they? I can't remember. Geography has never been my strong point. But uh, yeah, so this is a bottle of the, and I think this is what it's called, uh, Episode 1, Light, Darkness and Balance. So uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's the second Star Wars themed uh, beer in uh, the space of a, a one-off week. What are the chances of that? And I'm not even that big of a Star Wars fan, to be honest. But yeah, so this is a 19.3% ABV ice distilled Imperial Stout aged on space-side whiskey casks with new American oak chips. Ice distilled Imperial Stout, just about underneath 20% ABV. Thank fuck it's in a 330ml bottle with the artwork carrying on there. Let me give you a little bit of a close up so you can actually see it. Uh, first of all, beautiful artwork on this, very comic booky. Um, I suppose it sort of fits in with the. the the theme of Star Wars, do you know what I mean? That sort of like popular culture kind of comic book because there's a lot of like comic book crossovers and graphic novels and uh, like Comic Con and stuff like that. I sound like I'm being very dismissive. It's not, I just, I don't know what I'm talking about to be honest. So yeah, light and darkness. Fucking hell. I just can't believe I'm going to be drinking this on my own. Pick this up from Northern Beer Temple um, upon the recommendation of John and uh, he said he absolutely loved his and uh, found that he drank it way too quickly which is probably going to happen. So let's read the blurb. It is a time of uncertainties. The dark and evil, evil galactic empire has spread fear and terror throughout the galaxy. The Sith have created anxiety in the world of beer. From the frozen planet Earth of young rebellion, from the frozen planet Earth, a young rebellion has risen. Uh, on their mission for galactic freedom, they are trying to bring hope and a better future. A quest to balance out every planet overshadowed by the evil dark side. In is in this, can't read. In this epic collaborative battle, the dark Sith leader of the Molan and the Jedi's from Utia Brewery Company face each other in this epic battle bottled in a 330ml bottle. 
and I think this is part of a series of really higher ABV beers. But there's the uh, there's the crown, the one for the collection. So, without any further ado, let's get this opened and see what we get. Uh, had this for a little while now, so I've been uh, holding off on it, waiting for the right occasion. I thought Imperial Stout Week, what better time? So, using my uh, Bierda de Noel glass because it's the only snifter that I have. I need to get more snifters for me snouts, for me stouts. Could have said stifter anyway. So let's give this a pour and see what we get. It's not making any sound as it's getting going in the in the bot in the glass. That is looking very syrupy, very thick, potent. That big glug at first was okay. Definitely let you know it was a heavier beer, and you can clearly tell because no head at all. <laughs> as black as the as space and uh yeah just look at that dense undiscovered and uh, about to be ruined by humanity so what have i got myself in for on this one You would not think that that's approaching twenty percent ABV. There's there's a there's like a sweet booziness there, but it's not harsh. It does remind me, and it's this is probably just the the, the power of persuasion or whatever it's called, uh, because of course the yeah, Aventina's Icebox. I'm getting that sort of that al slight alcoholic sweet syrupy. Uh, liqueur aroma I get from Aventina's Icebox, which I need to pick up a few bottles because I've not had that for absolutely ages and it's one of my all-time favourite beers, but loads of sticky chocolate syrup on this. You know, that like chocolate syrup you put on ice cream. <sighs> so cakey, sweet, smooth. You are getting that sort of uh, space size character. And that like woodiness, but I wouldn't say it's the most. Uh, I mean, the beer that we had yesterday, the Isla, that was a little bit more evident from that barrel and whiskey character on the nose. But this, this is just ridiculous. It really is ridiculous. Just how quite muted, matured, and reined in it smells. But it's so fucking advertiser, you know, do you know what I mean? It is just teasing you to have a taste, so I'm preparing for a, the Song of the Siren with this one. Sorry, I can't think of any seductive Star Wars puns, so I'm just going with mermaids, with the angelic voices, and then I'm sure when I drink it, I will be, I will be seduced and then devoured, like a black hole. There we go. Even though there was never a mention of black holes in Star Wars, from what I remember. Maybe in the Disney-fied versions, we don't know. By the way, I mean, I get it if you're a Star Wars fan, it's great to have new Star Wars films. But when they're like, every fucking year, doesn't it sort of take away that sort of, that, like, sort of special place element that Star Wars films should have? It kind of makes them less personal, do you know what I mean? Anyway, that's that's just my ignorant take on that, because I'm not a Star Wars fan. I mean, I, I love the original trilogy, but the newer films are just like... Eh. It's like any other film that Hollywood's producing, but it's got a bit of a Star Wars skin put on it. It doesn't feel like Star Wars, it just doesn't. The technology's more advanced in the newer films that... A lot of them are like set before the original trilogy. But it's like you had Star Wars the, the first three films, right? The original. Then you had one, two, and three, the prequels. And now we've got other film we've got other entries now that are set before, like, you know, the sort of um what's that what's that term they use? 
when they int when they make a film about a character from the film series or whatever. You know what I'm talking about. But like they always look like they've got better technology in the prequels. It just doesn't make sense to me. And they're too flash. You know, they look like every other fucking boring Hollywood production. They look like every other fucking super hero film. You could blend them all into the same universe and it would work. That's how vanilla Hollywood has become. Anyway, no disrespect to any Star Wars fans, obviously. Um, I could make a jokey mixing up Star Trek with Babylon 5 or whatever, which I think I did in my Princess Slayer review. But I'm not funny enough to pull that off, so I won't do that again. Anyway, should I just give this beer a taste, review it, and then collapse on the bed? I think that would be better off. Cheers, guys. Okay, now it tastes like a 19% beer. Smooth as silk going down. That first intake. It's got... It's so sticky on the lips as well in the aftermath. That's what she said. Why did I have to lower the tone? It's... It's reminding me body-wise of port like a thick fortified wine big milk chocolate chocolate milk on that first sip when it first goes in your mouth then that sort of like space side character comes through a little bit of woodiness a little bit of that barrel, a little bit of earthiness. But that sweetness is maintained throughout. Get a bit of like demerara sugar in there. Sort of like sweetened froth of a coffee. Just no harshness at all. All you're getting is a warmth as it's going down. But it's such a lovely, comforting warmth. <laughs> you would not think that that's approaching 20% ABV. You just would not. That is probably the most dangerous beer that I've ever had. But I'm purposely taking smaller sips because I know it's a 19.4 ABV beer. It, it's it's like imperial stout that you know and love but just like jacked up lovely sticky dark sweet malt character it's it's almost like a pastry stout level uh, with the the complexity of the body lovely and bold sticky smooth just the right amount of carbonation just help distribute the beer around your palate this is it's not loud it's not obnoxious this could have gone completely into overdrive what's what's the star wars fans are probably cringing like fuck while they're watching this video um, but what's that where the millennium falcon goes really fast it could be like that it could just be insane obscene but it's not it's a beautifully executed, mature, well-crafted beer that get you get the, all those Imperial Stout characters, but the, the ice distilling aspect of it, again, it reminds me of something like Schneider, um, the Aventinus, where you get that like really sticky, uh, caramelised, dark fruit character. But then it's also... Got a really nice sweet port like character to it, which I've not really had with any Imperial Stout before this one. Um, to be honest, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what would happen if you did ice distill Imperial Stout. Obviously, I you know it'll just make that ABV even higher. 
So part of me is thinking maybe that's just like going to be really in your face and abrasive, but it's really, really not. It's one of those weird situations where it's drinking like 19% beer, but it's not drinking like a 19% beer. And you could definitely fall into the trap of that trap in Star Wars where that big like penis shaped in the, that creature in the sand. Um, when Lando Calrissian betrayed Han Solo. You are such a gobshite here. You will be. You will be. Back to the beer and not my own personal shame. That's absolutely gorgeous. Um, on a drinking experience, it's just mm -hmm. fun, fun out of this world. It's just, I've never had anything like this. Um, I've had really big in your face Imperial Stouts for with that ABV, but you know, I've had like 10% ABV. Uh, Imperial Stouts, which have been so much more harsh. Just like the Brewdog beer that we had yesterday, you get the barrel, you get the, the whiskey side of it, but it doesn't intrude on the beer. This is big, sticky and sweet. It's, it's cakey. It's cake batter. It's not too sweet, though. You've not put caster sugar in the batter mix. You've just put loads of lovely brown sugar, Demerara, whatever. I don't know any sugars. But at the same time, I don't know how I would rate this out of 10. Because this is like the only beer like this I've ever had. But going on a purely selfish, indulgent take on the beer, I'm in absolute heaven with this right now. And to me, it's just 10 out of 10 all day. Um, it's, it's, it's like luxury. It really, really is. And I think I paid like less than £10 for it as well. Or at least in between 10 and £14. Quite a leap. Um, what was that like a leap? Wasn't that part of the term of when, when you're going to hyperdrive? It's not hyperdrive though. You know what I'm talking about. Um, I'll stop it now, don't worry. And I'll take this bloody hat off as well, because I'm looking like a twat. Anyway, so yeah, 10 out of 10. Um, just a remarkable beer, uh, which was what I was expecting it to be, but really not at the same time. This beer has no right to be as silky smooth and muted and just devilishly indulgent as it is. But I'm so fucking thankful. Because I'm enjoying this a lot more than I thought I potentially would. I thought it would just be such an abrasive, completely in your face experience. But it's really, really not. They've done a cracking job with this. And um, yeah, both breweries should definitely be commended for pulling this off in the way that they have. I'm not sure how many other breweries have done ice distilled stouts. I'm sure there's loads who've done it. But uh, I'd definitely be interested to try more of this. And uh, on a, another selfish note, it's made me really want to pick up a couple of bottles of the, the Ice Buck now. Because I'm getting those sort of characters in this as well, which is strange. But it works beautifully with an Imperial Stout. It's like a pastry stout without the additives and flavourings in it. And what they've done with the ice distilling and also just the wonderful use of malts alone... Is something that should be absolutely marvelled and there's a reason why both breweries are in such high regard and uh, I need to drink more beers from both breweries to be honest and uh, if this isn't if this didn't inspire me to to get off my arse and pick up more beers from both breweries as I scratched the back of my leg I don't know what will because that's just absolutely terrific magical it really really is so if you've tried it let me know your thoughts opinions down below if you've tried anything else in this series uh, that they've done, I'd love to hear your thoughts, opinions. Are you a fan of either brewery? 
Um, if any of my friends have felt the YouTube's reviewed this one, the links are down below. And of course, check out both breweries. Uh, check out the playlist for the previous videos up to this point. Um, some interesting beers, I will say that. Terrible reviews, but interesting beers. Check out my Imperial Stout playlist as well. And hopefully, um, you'll join me tomorrow for another um, entry, the, the penultimate entry into Imperial Stout Week. And we're going really, we're going back to our roots and going, well, that's money I've literally spilt all over the floor. Um, we're going back to our roots and going uber traditional. Well, it's not really because it's it's not that old of a, a beer recipe, actually, but oh well. Anyway, so let me just mop that up with a t-shirt and uh, I'll bid you all a fond farewell and uh, live long and prosper. See you guys later. You are such a twat.